everybody welcome back if you're watching this video there's a fair chance you've just come from the latest japanica series which is japanica 1.5 solo trip to tokyo and if not uh, this video isn't going to be making much sense to you because I want to make a sort of conclusion slash uh, closing statement to the vlog travel portion of the series so it might not make much sense feel free to stay if you want to it might inspire you to go back and watch the whole series or the previous series so you to you but for others welcome back it's been so long since i've sat here to make a video that i'm feeling kind of self-conscious and um hopefully my neighbors aren't staring at me uh yeah here we go anyway i wasn't quite ready to make this particular video uh or rather resume making videos after the whole series ended uh, because mainly um, I was hoping to get things back in order in my work life and personal life since I had put a lot of things on hold just to be able to edit and publish weekly videos uh, for the, the travel series so I had put that on hold, worked full time on the series no clue how I managed to get two videos up every week for the first series i don't know maybe i'm getting older tighter and slower but yeah regardless i had to put everything on hold to publish and once that's the series like the, the travel portion of the series was over i was hoping to attend to the other issues before coming back but yeah it's taking much longer than i thought things have been piling up and every time i finish, finish one thing another thing adds to the pile and another thing so yeah, even though I want to focus on finishing these things first, I can't expect you guys to just like wait around and be patient for such a long time and wait for me to finish these things. So yeah, long story short, it was making me nervous and I didn't want to let the series cool down too much before getting to the extra videos of the series, which I do want to make, which are coming, just like, yeah, life. <laughs> life is happening so here i am thanking you for your patience almost there i think oh my god multitasking yeah so japaniku 1.5 was it worth it well the short answer to that is yes yes of course it was worth it the more truthful and drawn out answer to that question starts with yes but so if you've been with me from way before the trip even started, you know that the entire thing was kind of a spur of a moment type of thing where I saw plane tickets on the cheap, it was decently priced and I just thought, you know, I'm gonna just go for it. I bought the tickets with money I didn't really have, thinking that I'd have more than enough time to save up and create a decent, maybe kind of tight but decent budget for the trip. The reason I thought I'd be able to raise the money was because the first time I went to Japan in 2017, the job from heaven just landed into my open palms and made the whole thing possible and extraordinary and it made like so many opportunities and possibilities because the like the funding was there I, I was able to really travel through japan like for a long period of time by myself and i i just felt like from this experience i felt like i could make it happen again for the second time whereas this time i wasn't able to raise as much money as i hoped i was really restricted uh, financially and I was really pushing it hence the 1.5 title for the series instead of 2.0 uh, and uh, remaining in Tokyo the decision to remain, remain in Tokyo that's the biggest reason for my yes but because this uh, aspect the financial aspect the restriction caused me to cut corners uh, to a degree where things really got uncomfortable for me in Tokyo and this unfortunately but that's the reality of things unfortunately dampened the whole experience and that was a lesson i had to learn one way or another so that i don't make the same mistakes twice and also i can share my mistakes with you guys so you don't have to suffer like i did so if you watched the whole series by now i think you know where i'm getting at with this and it's the fact that i almost didn't sleep for two entire weeks because i decided to go for 
for a capsule style hostel to stay in. Again, to save money, to cut costs. The hostel in itself wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't my favorite place I've ever stayed at, but it wasn't bad. It was just bad for me because you see, I'm the type of person who needs their own uh, personal time to recharge and my like my own little bubble and put my feet up and just recharge that's like the best way I can <laughs> I can put it recharge my batteries that I've been um, eating into by going out every day and having adventures and like really putting myself out there and challenging myself in something that is completely out of my comfort zone so eating into the batteries every day and coming back but not having this place to call my own I thought I could do it I really did because I did manage to do it the first time and again in 2017 I was in a kind of a capsule style hotel maybe a little more uh, in a more breathable manner with Toko uh, I managed to do that for 10 days on the first trip but for some reason I couldn't do it again this time I quickly started feeling burnt out, like I felt uncomfortable, I couldn't sleep, my anxiety was through the roof and I think there are multiple factors that come in to uh, maybe affect how this experience was different from the first one. One, my anxiety has been a more severe, let's say like that, more severe uh, recently compared to 2017 where I did have anxiety but it wasn't as bad as what I've been going through recently and also prior to the trip I had gotten like a really bad cold maybe like a mini flu big cold one of the two um, which I guess m made me start the trip tired like I was tired beforehand so maybe that could have affected the whole experience it's hard to tell at this point but all I know is that this decision to stay at a hostel is probably like the main mistake I made on the trip. Choosing to save a few more bucks, um, which I guess was a good thing because it made me able to do more things with the, like the tiny budget that I had, but it was a mistake to choose money over comfort because it did affect the whole experience. So main mistake, or maybe the main mistake was like doing a solo trip with a ridiculous budget like halfway around the world but I mean we're past that at that point so um, and I anyway I regret nothing and I'm grateful for <laughs> the lessons I've learned on this trip because I will not repeat them and I can teach them to you guys but yeah I believe that if I had gotten more money for this trip I maybe should have tried a business hotel but then again i've never experienced a business hotel so there's no knowing how that experience would have turned out could have been worse could have been better you don't know but yeah also keep in mind that just because it didn't work out for me doesn't mean it won't work out for you i mean this is uh almost purely personality based i want to say because like i said the hostel was fine a lot of people stay there it's like a, it's a good hostel but for me it didn't work uh, I couldn't sleep, like I said, I couldn't sleep, my anxiety flared up, it wasn't comfortable uh, long term because I had to figure out how to go to the storage area where my suitcase was, to like the bathroom area and this area, like it wasn't comfortable at all, it was kind of a nightmare, like even simple things such as like getting ready in the morning was like such a hustle. I felt scruffy in anything I wore because I couldn't really plan things which like made going out in public even more stressful like everything like everything was just not for me it was like it was like really it was teaching me what I needed but like showing me what I didn't want <laughs> but yeah lesson learned I need my own space for sure. I think I should have spent more money on comfort instead of challenging myself. Like I should have even borrowed money because I didn't have it. I should have borrowed money even though I despise asking for that type of thing because like I'm independent, like yada yada yada. Instead of challenging myself to do this on my own and you know like being I can do this, I can cut corners, I can figure things out. And I did figure things out, but at what cost, you know? I, my the budget was ridiculous, you guys. And I will make a video of like how I plan my trip, same as like last time, and you'll see for yourself 
I will make that video um, so that you won't be doing the same thing as me. If you're the same kind of personality, if you need your own space, don't do what I did. You guys saw it for yourself. Uh, during the last like the last episodes the last days I feel like my eye bags were down to my knees I was feel, I, I was less adventurous um, I was more anxious I had that weird stomach ache towards the end um, I, I was kind of ready to go home to be honest towards the end of the series um, whereas when I first arrived in Tokyo that that month I was like yeah I'm never going home this place is awesome and towards the end I was like I was craving comfort so bad that I was actually ready to pack it up and leave. Yeah, I just didn't feel good. And that's why I'm actually being super cautious planning the next trip. Uh, I've already mentioned it a few times. I've been like, yeah, I'm super excited. It's gonna be a big one. And it's true, it's gonna be a big ass trip. I'm very excited about it, but because it's going to be a very big project to undertake, it requires a lot of planning and funding obviously and I have an end date in mind um, I have my end goal end date that I really wanted like I want it to happen by that date but because of what I've learned from the previous trip I know that if I don't have enough funding by that time I will postpone the project I will postpone the trip because I mean what's the point of learning everything I've just learned um, to just like ignore the mistakes I've made and just repeat them again. So yeah, even though I will be gutted and disappointed and like I'm, I'm right now I'm, I'm really striving for that date, if I don't have everything necessary by that time, I'm going. I'm not putting myself through that again. <laughs> so yeah, let's, let's cross our fingers guys, let's. So, in conclusion, <laughs> Was it worth it? Well, yes, yes, it was worth it. It was worth uh, the adventure, it was worth for the experience, for the food, for um, putting myself out there, you know, like really challenging myself, getting out of my comfort zone, like going out every single day to fill up my day with a lot of things just to get the vlog going and like challenging my inner demons, saying like, you're not good enough, you, you, your vlog suck. It was all worth it. It was worth the, the lack of sleep, the exhaustion, the anxiety. It was worth it, but only if I acknowledge the mistakes I've made and the lessons I've learned. That is my conclusion. So yeah, this was a really chatty video that I feel like I had to make. Maybe more for myself, I'm not sure. I. I I wanted to make it separate from everything else because I feel like I wanted to be honest about this experience that it's not always all fun and games. This trip felt hard. It was fun, but it was hard compared to my first trip, which was the first time I was in Japan, which was extraordinary and magical and discovering everything. And whereas this one was more like, hard work it was more work than vacation it was figuring things out uh like the second time around um like maybe the first time was a fluke maybe the second time i'm not able to do it it was figuring all that out and also figuring out the balance between cramming all these things to do into one day to make a vlog um and also like trying to I experienced things myself, like not experience everything through a lens. That was really difficult for me to do. So two completely different experiences. And I wanted to be honest about it because it, it was great. It was an amazing trip, but it was a hard trip. The conditions I was, I put myself in, it was hard. I made it hard for myself. <laughs> if the first trip was an experience, this trip was more like about learning things, like learning about myself and learning about more about traveling solo and what not to do and <laughs> yeah, all that fun stuff. So I hope I'm explaining this right and I'm not coming off as ungrateful, like boohoo, you went to Japan and like it was hard. No, I. I hope I'm not coming across as that because that is 100% not true. I'm super grateful and I've been humbled by this experience like 100%. So hope my message is coming across.
clearly. So as mentioned, there are definitely more videos about this trip coming up, like how I planned it. I want to do some story times that work in the vlogs, some guides. Uh, you guys have requested a Q&A, so uh, feel free to already start commenting your questions down below this video or on social media. You can tag me um, using the hashtag AskEcoTree so I can find all the questions when the time comes to make that video. Also feel free to leave requests, uh, like suggestions uh, for other videos surrounding this trip or like surrounding Japan or surrounding um, myself. I don't know. Whatever you want, like just suggest it. I'll read through them, see like which ones come up the most and uh, make a video about it. Also, I'm trying to find the time. Geez, time is always an issue at the moment. Trying to find the time to finish polishing and publishing the Japaniku illustrated project which is um, all the drawings I've made during this trip like through this little cartoon format that you've maybe seen if you're following me elsewhere if you're a patron definitely if you're watching my Instagram story that's usually where I put them when I have one um, so like all the little cartoon experiences that I've had throughout the trip trying to put that online as a project. I'm very passionate about this project. I'm very passionate yet shy about my art. So I think I may be procrastinating a little bit, but I definitely want that to happen, but I'm also a perfectionist. So yeah, it'll happen soon. I hope I really want to get it out there and I hope you guys will like it. I want to thank everyone who participated in the Derby Coup competitions, like with the comments, you guys really made it fun. Here are a few of the winning sketches. Still have a maybe two more to do uh thank you to everyone who left comments like kind comments supportive comments like you really helped me through challenging times you really helped me like through your dms and your sweet words thank you so much thank you obviously to my plus 10 tier patrons the Bergabun tier uh adam wiles and devil khan this is your shout out. Thank you to anyone who donated through coffee, direct donation, bought some merch. Thank you so much to you guys. Obviously, like my heart is full. Yeah, so obviously if anyone's interested, like all the links are below, extra links, like how to download the vending mission of the day song, a link to my Discord server, which I don't really understand how to use yet, but I try to get in there. We're, we're we, there are three of us <laughs> for now, but yeah, come and chat. I feel like I've been speaking for Forever. Um, I'm not sure if this video made sense, but I wanted to make it. Uh, I think I've said my piece. Like, quick shout out to my favorite shirt at the moment, which is the social anxiety shirt. I think it's fitting for now and this video. Let's just turn it into a um, <laughs> into a tank top because there is a heat wave right now, and I am. <laughs> dying clearly hope i'm not too shiny not too red in the face because it's really hot i mean what the hell <laughs> thank you so much for your patience i hope to get the next videos out to you really soon but like again life but thank you for waiting you are all very lovely and i'm very grateful for you guys so i love you all see you very soon fingers crossed hopefully this is really weird <laughs> bye <laughs>